And we're live back. from Prompt. How'd you like our dinner? Yeah. It's Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. We were doing the uh, taco, taco part. part of the Tech Talk Taco Tuesday. Yeah. My name is Jimmy Lewis. I'm here with Big John Perkins. Um, you can find him at. You're gonna give your uh, social media. Oh, do I have handle. one of those? Yeah, you have a social media. Oh, handle. oh, it's it's a Big Boar Savant. Yeah, Big Boar Savant on Instagram, where he posts pictures of vintage bikes. I do. Um, and occasionally, my child wrecking. So. Yeah, your ch- oh, there's a couple out there. A couple. He's he's getting there. He's getting there. <laughs> okay, so um, how's the sound, everybody? Oh, well, just checking. Good. Janie's actually watching us today because oh, she doesn't boy. have to work. She said the Modelo looks good. And she's right. The <laughs> the Modelo is good, but hey, the Janie, this is for you since it is Tech Talk Taco Tuesday, and all we talk about is motorcycle and motorcycle related products. Uh, I have tequila, so don't be surprised. This is a this is a new one. I'm pretty sure I'm not uh, I'm not certified in this. This is Siempre, um, mm. and so we're gonna we're gonna have a little bit of this to get this episode rolling. And the reason I mentioned uh, John and his Instagram handle is because he's our social media. Criticizer, um, I, I I'd like to say advisor, but it just seems like it's never <laughs> it's never super positive. Always full of great ideas, which are not implemented. Un, unimplemented, yes. Yeah, they get unimplemented, un- and it's like, why don't you do this? And I go, that'd be a great idea. I just got to find somebody to do it. So you just uh, you start following at Big Boar Savant, and and you notice uh, oh, his start. how he's managing his account. Um, uh, and I, I know you're one step ahead of me cause you're using the, the child, you know, you know, I know how to, I want to go big on Instagram. I'm going to use boobs and children. Yes. Yes. Certainly start with boobs and then end with children. It's, it's kind of the <laughs> motorcycles, every other picture. And then, Kittens. yeah. Ah, yes. So but John, no, here's to, to here's to, to Sampre. You can tell me what you think of it. I already know what I think of it as a certified tequila Risto. Um, I'm sure you've heard about me talk about that, but we got a lot to talk about in tonight's show. We are going to talk about um, uh, a WR450 versus a Yamaha 450FX. We are going to talk about a Sierra 450X. We're going to talk about the Christini all-wheel drive motorcycle. We're going to talk about Andrew Short, and then we're going to talk about... Uh, why you guys aren't buying enough T-shirts or clicking through our Amazon link, and how I'm taking next week off because of it. I'm going to go on strike because I have to go and I have to go on work. Most people go on vacation, and then but I have to go on work. Do we have is that uh, is that climb link through through the DBT Amazon? Um, you could do it that way, but it's not. I didn't. I'm not smart enough to do all that stuff. I could go in the background of our Amazon account and figure that stuff out, but that's where I, that's where I, like a smarter person. Criticizer, would, remember? No, that was a constructive criticism. <laughs> oh, that was criticism, uh, I guess, but constructive was. criticism. So if you ever want to support us, help us out, you can always, uh, you know, click through that link on the bottom of a lot of our stories on the website, the Amazon banner link. Um, I will ship out t-shirts for at least the next day or two, and then um, then I'm going to not do it for a week or so. Uh, so if you want one of these awesome t-shirts like I have right here, um, Dirt Bike Test, John's uh, supporting, that's a stank dog that t-shirt. That's a stank dog shirt. That's pretty nice. Yeah. So <laughs> Mm. The, the 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 DBT stash was was dirty right this second. So. Yeah, and I was gonna say whenever you see me having a sip, you can you can talk, and that way it won't sound like I'm just gulping yeah, yeah, course, down my um my tequila. Although I didn't gulp it, I sipped it, and I'm actually kind of surprised by how that just tasted right now because like um a lot of times like how you it depends on what you're eating, and my mouth is kind of a little bit on fire. But we're gonna find out about how the fire works later. I made some salsa. It's all fresh stuff out of my garden. Uh, and we're going to try that uh, in a few minutes. Nothing, and then, nothing but the finest around here. We may be coughing. <laughs> I don't know. It, it, I don't think it's going to be that hot, but it has a potential to be because the chilies are like mystery chilies. I, I put a little thing that says what they are, but once they start growing. And a little bit of that's probably the prump dirt as well. This prump is, dirt. <laughs> yeah, not, not that this is a gardening podcast, but I mean... We were going to talk about motorcycles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 get right to it. Let's uh, let's start talking about. Well, what I really wanted to get you didn't pull one of my like little cards away, did you? No. Oh no, here it is, right here. No. So, um, as far as Tech Talk Taco Tuesday goes, our most uh, popular episode is number eighteen, which has Andrew Short on it, 
And we're going to talk about Andrew Short, who just finished second overall in the Silkway Rally yeah, over buddy, and that let went his first uh, and first stage win on a on a World Rally, which is super super awesome. Um, and he so he's over there. They raced from Russia to China via Mongolia, and I never got to do that rally or a version of that rally they used to have um, back in the day. And Everybody used to tell me, you got to go to Mongolia because it's like riding on a golf course. It's like, Jimmy, all grass, no stones. <laughs> and so um, I, uh, I, I'm super stoked for Andrew, but his episode is the most popular one. And John, the reason I bring this up is because your episodes, you have two of them that were really close in viewership. Oh. So, so that's why you need to get on your social media train uh, and start you, you promoting your episodes. A bit. And you think, because obviously you got a following, uh-huh. that, you know, because they're definitely better than the ones I do by myself. Um, those ones are just, they're in the gutter. But you can listen to them. They're, they're pretty funny. I dare you to go watch them and try to bump those ratings yeah, up. By all means, repeats are good. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, so John needs to get on his Instagram account because I think Andrew's got you smoked on the Instas. Oh boy, just by a couple, one or one or two followers, uh, like a hundred thousand. Yeah, I'm, maybe a hundred thousands or so. Anyway, I'm coming up on so, hundred so or so. If you're going to get on dirt bike tests for our um, amazing, you know, and I, I have I have some kids that are kind of supposed to be working on it, but they they're more focused on their own personal accounts. I think yeah. I'm not I'm not really sure. I don't. I actually should probably follow them too, right? So what you're saying is I should probably just take this whole deal over and yeah, run little, the run with it. Put yeah, spice into it. Yeah, I'll get you to log into dirt bike test and then and then we'll put some children on and see if that does the bumping that we're looking for. Yeah. Wait, no children. We well, don't say anything. I don't think on Instagram you can't say anything really that bad. It's not like Twitter. No, no, by all means, uh, we are hopefully in the process of children's t-shirts for DBT. Oh man, that, are you the one that keeps emailing me with all those different accounts and? Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's our next batch. I'll 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 set aside a little bit of a little bit of the revenue that we don't have coming in to get children's t-shirts because it nothing better than to dress your toddler up just like me. Yes. Yeah. T3 would be a, a good selling <laughs> size, I believe, but I don't even know the sizes. I think that's toddler 3. Okay, cuz you have to scale all the stuff so the artwork has to get scaled. Uh, this could be pricey. The artwork no. the same, let it wrap Is around. It, do you spend a lot of money on your children's shirts? I, I I personally do not unless it's really cool. <laughs> so okay, so I got because it could be just another just like look at that wall over there. See all those t-shirts? Uh, yeah, those could be could be a could, extra extra small kids. I mean, we can just like tie the sleeves and knots and do that kind of stuff, yeah. right? <laughs> okay, Probably. back to mo- so you've got to compete with Andrew Short on your uh, on your thing, and Trevor's the other Trevor Hunter, who's the other um, one that kind of works on our social media account. Uh, I think you might have me beat as well. He's got you beat too. Yeah. Well, he's faster than you. I know that. Yes. Yes, he is. I don't know if he's faster than me yet. I haven't haven't tried to smoke him lately, but the last time I I beat him and just just to you know like rub the rub the thumb in a little bit because I want him to come out and um, I want him to come out and train with me because he's making some. I mean, just I watch him ride and I'm like, oh jeez, right. like there's four or five little things that he could do, and you know this from. Yeah, helping course. at the schools that just like little stuff that'll make a big difference, and I'll never be able to see him again. But uh, so, Trevor, I I I don't even know if that's him. He switched. So he manages the Facebook account. You notice it went from a what was it before? It was a Honda. It was a Honda with uh, I think it was Ryan that was on Ryan Nitson. Uh, Ryan's dad is one of our super fans on the uh, a top fan, by the way, on the thing. And I, I'm still I still forgot to go in and look to see how you make people top fans, but. Uh, so I think Ryan was the guy on the Ken Roxon bike, and now I think it's Trevor on the Kawasaki. So he's kind of following my footsteps. He's, he's got the password, is he? It, yeah, he's always had the password. But when you're in charge, you know how, like, you're if you're the magazine editor of the magazine, you put yourself on the cover of the magazine. Well, I only did that about seven or eight times, maybe. That's it. <laughs> so, so Trevor, good job. Um, yeah, putting yourself on the cover of the, cause that's, I mean, the Facebook page is kind of, that's it. And of course you can, you can put yourself on the cover of the web, of the website, www.dirtbiketest.com. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should probably go there and check it out. Um, because there's like a lot of covers, it's like sliders that go by, yeah. but, uh, and eventually you get bumped off of that one and work your way down a little bit, but it's, it's okay. Yeah. You know, you just, yeah. Cause you've been on there a few times. Yeah. If I could get the password for that as well, that would be uh, fantastic. 
Uh, wow. <laughs> Anyways. Well, hey, you know, and I never say anything nice about anybody before just beating them back into submission. So <laughs> Trevor um, posted, he did an awesome job on the betas, the 2020 betas. Oh, that's what else we're going to talk about. I got to write that down because I'm going to forget. 2020 beta. Betas. Okay. So he did, he did a um, kind of like beta release their press information yesterday. Um, so we got it and Trevor uh, took it, digested it. Makes it so you don't have to read all of the stuff, just the important things. And he was really impressed that Beta finally, or revolutionarily, revolutionarily went to oil injection. I love the idea. Oh, I know you love the idea, I, but do, you don't you don't understand the sarcasm here. Uh, y- it's yeah. they've been they've been oil injected for a few years. Yeah, they have. Yeah, Beta has. It's and not. I mean, but the the big stuff. thing that Beta switched to is they went to counterbalance. That's cool. That's yeah, so they have a counterbalance motor. Remember when we took your motor apart? There was the there was the stuff in there. It was there ready was the, for it. It was just, ready for it. The yeah. castings were in there. You could you could machine it out, and there could have been a, a counterbalance yeah, inside so they, of it. They had plans for it, and that was, that was a twenty thirteen motorcycle. Yeah, so it's, they've, they've, they've I, had the idea for a while. It was funny, and I, I kind of poked around in some different forms to find out if in the past they had had a counterbalance motor because I remember when I saw that, I, and I kind of thought that they may have, but I don't know. That much, I don't. I'm not, I'm not a beta historian. I've well, probably ridden the, every one of them, mm-hmm. but um, I don't know if that was the case that they actually had a counterbalance motor. And I know they know they used to have a slower revving motor, you know, a, quite a while back, you know, in the well, 2008s and stuff like that. And maybe it was counterbalanced back then, but I don't remember because mm-hmm. that would be one of which, the things you would take it out to yeah, make. Which it I don't have aggressive. a lot of experience with with trials bikes, but I don't know would would those guys benefit from that? I would say probably so. So are there smaller, I mean, they're, they're same size displacements, but, they're, but smaller motors. They're, their trials motors are completely, yeah, completely different. That's what I'm getting at, though, were those, because 2013 was kind of the beginning of Beta's modern two-stroke yeah. XC-style bike, you know, real true so, race bike. So so those cases on that bike were not from, they, they were brand no, new that year. those cases were designed for 2013, as far as I know. Oh, okay. Because that yeah. was a first-year bike. See, I don't, I don't know that, I don't have the history. I know there's, we got a couple beta historians on the, uh, in, the, they're guys that are, well, they're, they're di- driving the wool beta riders that are in, um, on the forum, and they might be able to answer and, uh, you know, fill us into that. But anyhow, so the big news, it was, it was funny because I, I told Trevor, man, great job. You, you, you broke down that information. It was good. And then I just said, and uh, that oil injection, it's been on the bikes for a few years now. But in, in his defense, he's only ridden beta RRs, which mm-hmm. always had that removed. Uh-huh. And so he'd, he'd never experienced the oil injected one. I, I love the oil injection. I remember the first time we had it, I was a little skeptical. I'm like, eh, is this really going to work? I mean, I mean, Yamaha had it back on that little JT60 that I had that we put in a go-kart. And yep. That didn't work very well. I've never seized a motor well, so they, many times. They worked good right up until the point when they stopped working, which was fairly common. And yeah. And, and then I, everything stopped working. And I think they were, to, they, they because, they, you know, these are now digital, the way they're controlled and stuff. It's a, There's a computer controlling how much oil's going mm-hmm. in. So it knows when it's wide open and it pumps the right amount of oil in. Mm-hmm. That little JT60... It pumped enough oil to just be going burp, burp like that, but it was in a go-kart, and we had that thing taped all the time, and it seized, like I said, more times than, and I blamed oil injection. So I, I always thought, you know, you got to take it off, and that that is a common fear, and I know a mm-hmm. lot of guys were taking it off because they wanted to mix their oil, but even that, and then even the KTM, the TPI bikes that have it, it's um, it's spot on. It does, a, it does a really good job, you know, as long as you're running the right oil, mm-hmm. and and I know guys have put the wrong oil in there, and they're the first guys to seize their bike and then go to the internet and say oil injection doesn't work. So uh, yeah, like like anything, you, it's it's really hard to find internet reviews on something that worked good. Yeah, well, it's always if it doesn't doesn't work. So, anyways, good job on that, Trevor. Um, great great job on putting your cover on the uh, your photo on the cover <laughs> of the Facebook page, and I, it did freshen look look up a little bit, and uh, which is which is nice because it was looking. Kind of Hondi, and now oh. now you've influenced John to wreck, um, to wreck my face. Our, our I'm sorry, our Facebook yeah, page. Yes, there we go. Yeah. Got so somewhere. Okay, I promised that John would answer all of the questions right off the bat without um, referring to a reference manual. Uh, well, Craig Hunter's on here, or he was on here earlier. That's uh, Trevor's dad. I used to race with Craig back in the day. Um, let's see. That was done before we're. Uh, 
before we actually got live going. Audience is listening. Yeah. Um, let's see. You see any questions in there that kind of – no sound. Yeah, okay. well, that's all right. There was no sound because we had the sound shut off because we were mm-hmm. – crunching on tacos so what we're going to do is from now on we're going to start up a little bit early or at least start the camera up a little bit early just to get things rolling but um then they give us a chance to eat our tacos so if you like that idea you can just start hitting smashing that thumbs up button right now and i'll see it in about 20 seconds and i'll know that was a good idea or <laughs> it, was a, it was a bad idea so so, so before we before we get too started here I'm yeah loving the taco idea and everything but I, i've got i've got a question about the uh kawasaki 250 the KX250. Correct, yeah. And this is not so much pertaining to that particular motorcycle, but more or less the current state we are in in, in motorcycles. At what point are we going to start dropping the F off of the four-stroke so line? So Kawasaki just did that. That's that's why I was Oh, that's why. Okay, so I, so I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I'm sure they made a big deal of, uh, mm-hmm. of it at the press intro. So the the... The reason for the F is means four stroke. Generally means four stroke, and it was back when brands had a two stroke two hundred and fifty and a four stroke two hundred and fifty. That's why there were some bikes like a there was a KX four hundred and fifty, and then there was a KX two hundred and fifty F, and then some of the KTM's were EXC Fs. Mm-hmm. E, you know, so um, I I don't know. It's just a it's a it's a name. I just look at the exhaust pipe, right? Yeah, that's, I, like, that's what I tell I, her. I just, <laughs> I've been kind of contemplating that over the last couple of years going, you know, when, when, when are the big manufacturers, you know, Kawasaki, odds are they're probably not going to drop that dream KX 300 with TPI and kickstand and 18. That's, that's probably not going to happen. Oh, the one that pops up on the internet every time, every, every year. April-ish. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, I think part of it is, is quote branding. I mean, it's mm-hmm. like, it's known, you know, they have an image and a logo and there's a, there's a you know, a, a branding to it, you know, it, you now with like, you know, hashtags or stuff like that. Yeah. If, if, you know, if we take it away, then all, then it's all of a sudden it's going to get convoluted with the two stroke ones. And, but I mean, how long has it been since Kawasaki made a KX250 two stroke? 12, 12 so, years. 12 years? Yeah. You've been counting every year you slit your wrists just a little <laughs> bit just to feel the pain yeah. a little bit more. Uh, just an uh, estimate of years. Yeah. Okay. So I'm trying to find questions on this thing. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the reload button. I heard that works. So let's see if we get some more questions because my feeds stopped. Mm. And uh, we'll see what goes on. Um, yeah. So you know what? This this week is funny. Nobody has any hardly any questions. Uh, they, that's because we've done done so well at answering them in the past that – I think I think they're scared to ask the questions because the the guy last week that asked the question about uh, he has a he had all these bikes and he was kind of contemplating between um, getting a three fifty or a four ten and stuff and he actually it, it was kind of cool he actually emailed back um, he watched him, one of the things on YouTube and he commented back on YouTube and he said hey thanks because and then he he put some more definitions because I said I don't know which one I mean what am I uh, mm-hmm. you know, I don't know which one you get but he he kind of threw some of the prices out there and a little bit more what he was thinking about and uh, that it made it easier but I, I did a pretty good guess whatever I told him the mm-hmm. answer was I forget that's one thing that's one thing that's super hard to to kind of collaborate together when you're comparing bikes. It, cost has to do a lot of it. I mean, we let's face it, majority of us that ride motorcycles have to pay for them. Oh, yeah. So, you know, when it comes time to reviewing them and you look at all the, the big name guys that, that review their bikes and it's like very rarely do you see a lot of talk about the cost. Oh. Where, yeah. It, it, comes, it comes from a guy who's ridden, you know, almost every brand mm-hmm. new bike for the last, you know, 20 years and has not had to pay for any of those bikes yeah. when I was riding them to review them. So, and I to- I totally agree with you one hundred percent. But as as not only as a as a test rider, but also as a as a guy running a magazine or, or putting this information out, I always I always put myself in the position. It's like, look, this is my ten thousand dollars. You know, I'm I'm hedging a ten thousand dollar bet if I buy this thing that you know hopefully it's the right one for me. I'm going to like this and. A lot of people do get a chance to do test rides or your buddy has one or something, but majority of people probably have to rely on reviews to really find out how it works. Now, yeah, it's super hard to you know is, find a buddy that's got, you know, just went out and bought a brand new every single color motorcycle. Yeah, it, is 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 that that important? I mean, is it, you know, there's, there's so much, there's like a lot of things like brand loyalty, which I kind of don't, 
I don't really understand. I mean, I do, but I don't because I mean, I have my, I don't want, I don't want to say I'm brand loyal, but if whatever I like right now, and it's funny because I, when Who, people start 570, uh, did you say Husaberg? Maybe. Okay, when people start accusing me of being um, kind of brand um, bias or oh you're a, you're a Honda lover you're a Honda lover and then I'll just I'll, I'll like not really I mean I just like th- this bike is working mm-hmm. really good and next week I'll be a Yamaha lover and then the next week it's a KTM lover and so um, you know as long as somebody doesn't dangle a Husaberg in front of me uh, this could be a little bit problematic. Fighting words. Um, so. I have a couple in the garage. You want to? We go out and start them up. Like two of them, right? Yeah, go rev them up a little bit. Um, so it, it's it's like I like I like riding whatever the best thing is at the at the moment, and, and also targeting the the proper bike for the ride I'm going to do. But a lot of people don't have that opportunity to have so many different things. But it's it's I I've, I'm fully aware. I just bought two KTM's. Did I say that out loud? Yeah, I bought two KTM's because <laughs> they're the best. By the way, yeah. absolutely the best. I bought I bought a two hundred and fifty and a three hundred and fifty EXC because I um, then uh, it was our test bike, our three hundred and fifty EXC. I kind of really fell in love with that thing, and my wife even more so. So that's her new bike. And then um, I got a two hundred and fifty because uh, for the schools to have a small one for training and stuff, and for tight technical trails, it's actually pretty fun. And they're not making it anymore, so. They're uh, they're on closeout. Oh, last good, year, huh? Good deal. Yeah, right. good good deal on one of those things. So so here's here's a problem with that is so so we've got people that now you can't go out and ride ten different motorcycles all brand new that your buddy just bought, right? So now you go to rely on reviews. Well, what do you do when there's three magazine companies and four different you know four different reviews on the same motorcycle? Mitch, you love this, don't you? You're laughing. You're la- open up the journalist. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was going to so, say go to dirtbiketest.com. Yeah, of course you go to dirtbiketest.com because we're the only Shame, um, un- unbiased, honest, uh, you know, credible opinion. No, I, it, everybody has an opinion, and this is this is kind of I, I I've always said this. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. They have their own their own way of looking at, of uh, you know. How something works, is it going to work for them? How they treat it, what they do, it, it's all this. There's, so your opinion is valid, valid to you especially. Mm-hmm. And then how much is it valid to other people? It kind of depends. I always say that it starts rolling back on experience. Like how much experience do you have in comparing it to the other things that are in that market? Mm-hmm. And even when I'm looking at some of the guys that are that are riding for us and, and testing bikes, sometimes they'll say something and – and I, I, I kind of, it kind of strikes me as, I don't know about that, and I, I think about, oh, they don't, they haven't ridden the other one, or they're not comparing it to this one. And it's, it's, and now like the guys like Trevor and Ryan have been riding the bikes for, they've mm-hmm. gone through a couple of years cycle. So when they ride a two fifty F, they go, hey, you know what, the Yamaha is the benchmark for low end power in the two fifty F class, mm-hmm. and, and. I'll tell you why, because the engine spun around backwards and <laughs> got that intake. That that's that's a that's a special thing that it's gonna be hard for anybody else to less, get that kind of less corners, less this. Yeah, they're on a on a two fifty F. I remember when I rode the four fifty and I said if they ever do this the two fifty F it it's mm-hmm. dangerous and it is dangerous. Mm-hmm. So so that's and you knowing that, and then okay, okay. So everybody's like, well, we can't match them there, so they're all shooting for this top end thing, yeah. and so everybody's playing around trying to get you know different power. But having the experience to be able to understand that and and talk about it and explain it makes it valuable. It's not good or bad. I mean, some people yeah. may never even ride the Yamaha where the Yamaha is good, and so what difference does it make? You need to ride it in, in different things. So you you kind of have to identify. Um, what your what your target audience is, you know, who who are you trying to sell this this bike to? And we try to test them for what they're designed for. So in other words, you will not see us take motocross bikes and go out and go trail riding with them. We just don't do it. Have you ever, you ever see us do that? No, you ever done that with us? That's just a <laughs> I mean, it's asking for bad reviews. <laughs> yeah, because they're not designed to do it. And one may be better than the other one, and maybe that's what you're going to actually do with it. But then that's why we do, you know, project bikes, or you know, somebody will do a project bike with something like that, or try to convert it to make it a little bit more. Did I just beat up on you because you have a CR? You bought the CR 450, and you're 
but you go to the track quite a bit. I do. I do. Yeah, yeah. So you're you're more of a tra- you, I'm in the middle, right? Yeah, you're kind of you're kind of more of a track guy now. I remember you were just a trail guy, and now you're a track guy, race guy. You know, just I still, switches. I still got some of those trail bikes. Don't worry. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> XR two hundred. I do. It's pretty nice. Yeah. KDX two hundred. I have one of those as well. Yeah. Yeah. This is about as good as it gets for <laughs> the trail bikes, right? Well, it's like you know, there's, there's the trail bike scale, and then you know, somewhere right at the top, there's the the KTM two hundred. And then right above it is where the KDX 200 <laughs> kind, of, kind of squeezes in there, just edges it out. Did you invite me to the KDX KX two-stroke owners group on Facebook? Gosh, I might have. That That's a good group. I mean, it, it's funny. You can go – that's the, some, kind of some of the cool things. You can go and find these different groups where, you know, you guys with some special needs um, can talk to each other and deal with your <laughs> your issues and get stuff sorted out and, and sell stuff – Either for really good deals or ridiculously high, high prices. Because I saw I, on that forum today, I'll tell you, I saw a guy hucking a brake pedal for like a KDX 200, like 250 bucks. I mean, that that brake pedal is that's worth almost as much as the bike. The bike's got to be like 350, right? Uh, they roll in right around six. You know, right around for, six for a good clean one. <laughs> Pretty solid machine. Yeah, so that's why you want to hang a two hundred and fifty dollar brake pedal on it. But it was probably custom billet machine, just specifically for that bike, and it's probably no longer that part's probably no longer available. I, I will have you know that I have it's, 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 as appealing as this conversation is. I have recently spent an absurd amount of money on a pair of uh, Works Connection frame guards for that particular motorcycle <laughs> that are no longer in production. Uh huh. I was pretty stoked about it. Anyways, we got some questions rolling in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we got questions. Um, you cannot only own one bike. Sorry. Uh, uh, yes, you can. Um, boy, there are questions rolling in. Um, you 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 can own only one motorcycle, and this kind of rolls back to the KDX two hundred. Oh, see. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so Craig Hunter, uh, Trevor's Trevor's dad. Uh, no questions. But after riding the Yamaha WR four fifty and the 450x fx the wr was absolutely amazing and felt comfortable right away and how come the hangar was broken off of it mm-hmm. <laughs> was that comfort or was that was that pain uh, a lot of log hopping on their ride but anyway so those bikes and we'll, we'll talk well, thanks for bringing that up craig um we'll talk about that right now uh the wr so we have the we've had the yamaha wr 450 for a while now uh, we have the we just got the YZ450 FX and these are both 2019s and we wanted to get them before they got them out of their press fleet. We wanted to get the FX because I rode it back east and I was really impressed with that bike back east. But we when I got the WR out here, I said, okay, that would have been in my head right away. That would have been better back east. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to get them in the same place to compare them. Unfortunately, that FX has not come into my possession yet. Of course, you know. Craig got to ride it, and Trevor took it. They took him up to Utah. It drove right by here and never stopped. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then, next thing you know, they're down in Baja with my wife and Jen Morton on a Baja nice. bound ride. They did a Hooters on scooters, and so those two got to compare them. And I, I quizzed Heather um, a lot on the on the two different bikes. And I'm trying to hook up with uh, Trevor to go riding later on at the end of this week before we have to turn the back in, just so. So I can do it. And then even when we were riding the WR with uh, up here locally with um, Kevin. It's mm-hmm. Kevin, right? He mm-hmm. has he has the older FX. He's yes, he's got a, a 16, 17, 16 or 17 FX. FX. And that was pretty educational riding those two back. But mm. it just showed me how good that the that last little progression Yamaha's made on the chassis and stuff came. But um, so and then we're also going to compare it, and I've ridden them back to back the WR with the Honda Sierra 450X. So another bike we'll hit on, but so we'll get a lot of those comparisons up. But the the biggest thing between those two bikes is is the WR. I feel it used to be just a I'll call it you know put it politely a bush pig. Yeah, yeah. It was it was never it just never adapted. It didn't get any of those good Yamaha like. YZ qualities. It seems like it when it went, you know, especially when they brought FX the WR, it just something happened to it, and I think it has a lot to do with the, the the emissions corking up that they do to it, but also whatever they did to the suspension just made it feel like it added weight to the bike, and it it was always kind of lazy in comparison to a YZ for sure and an FX by like a long shot. I I would always everything about me unless I needed to have that quote green sticker. You know that kind of compliance. Uh, you know, in California, 
I would never do the WR, but when I got this one, I was like, man, they uh, right right there, capable bike. Yeah, even even stock, mm-hmm. even you know, even when you take the throttle stop out and the little the little tiny sniffer out of the muffler, mm-hmm. and and there's a, there's an intake restriction. You take we, those things out, it's it's pretty darn good. Yeah, which correct me if I'm wrong here, but it, it almost felt like when when Yamaha went from the steel frame WR 2005 ish era. And I know a lot of this comes from progression with aluminum frames and kind of getting to to flex a little bit more and not quite be this giant hunk of of rattle your teeth out type of motorcycle frame. But uh, I I think what happened was they kind of went to this much more rigid frame, but we're still trying to do this open suspension. So they, you know, open chamber suspension. So they tended to be kind of wallery, but yet the frame was really stiff. Yeah. And, and what was the, the, there was the year that, they, they, there was a, there's a, <laughs> I just rode with a guy up in the mountains, um, up in Washington that had that, I want to say it's a 15. It's the one where they put the four, the WR 450 motor into the YZ 250 chassis. The first year of the fuel injected WR. Oh, that bike was, that was a mistake that, and I told the guy and I felt bad for, for saying it, that I told him that I got, that's one of my top five least favorite bikes, you know, right along with the Suzuki RM, RMZ, or the first time I rode the, mm-hmm. the Suzuki, kind of that same thing. Because they, these bikes, they, they they try to take the motocross bike and turn it into quota, you know, emissions compliant bike, and you know they don't they don't cross they they, they do enough stuff to where it could almost be a dual sport bike. That's how uh, yeah how corked up they get. And then the chassis, like the Suzuki, was the most rigid, stiffly suspended chassis, and it was really hard to uncork it essentially. And then the Yamaha, same thing. But kind of back to the the thing with the new WR is they've they've done a good job with it. And and if you if you take the the the, the minor little restrictions out, it's still quiet. It, it's the bike you know goes pretty darn good. And then when you know out here because we don't have those kind of rules out here. And if you're going to race it, do competition, you put that competition ECU in it, and then you can tune it just like the YZ. And then so it's basically it's it turns it into almost an FX. Mm-hmm. And and I say almost, and this is where I was talking to 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 Heather and Jen Morton about how how it was working, and it was like they said for trail riding, you know, you know, cruising down in Baja, which was for them, you know, kind of trail riding and stuff like that. Like the motors were gnarly. It they weren't like a you know, and, and Heather rides a KTM three fifty most of the time, and she was like, it, it's not like my KTM. I mean, when you turn that throttle, this thing like lunges and goes, and even the WR. A little bit less than the FX, and then they they even were trying the different maps, and it said still wasn't, it still wasn't quote mellow enough to be. I mean, yeah, it was fine, but they what she said, she said it was it was great for um, if I were going to ride faster, but I didn't want to ride any faster. <laughs> so so you know it's it's kind of gone a little bit more over into where it's a, a race bike. Mm-hmm. And and but that's the direction everything's going. I mean, everything's yeah, getting fuel injected. Those bikes are making crazy amounts of power, and even even detuning them, they they're faster than they were in two thousand five. So yeah, but uh, you know, it's it's funny that that often gets a, a common misconception when when people are looking at riding motorcycles. You know, a lot of times people, you know, hey, I'm an off road racer. I'm I'm an off road guy. I want more top end. And in reality, off road, how often do you use the top end of the motorcycle? Yeah, is especially uh, I, uh, oh, especially oh. for an average rider. Odds are you're never at the top of the power. So, did you did you see that video today? That guy that that um, was one of his top five mods to do your bike. Is he showed you how to adjust your throttle so you can get it to uh, eleven? Oh, full full you know stretch the cable type. You didn't see that, did you? No, it's no, it's, it's 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 going it's going a little bit viral. It's a guy. Uh, Tokyo Moto or something like that. It was posted. I saw it on Enduro Twenty One today. Um, but uh, he he had a mod that that he can turn his throttle to eleven, and I just laughed. That is, I was like, I I laughed because I have the mod. I can turn it to twelve. Can Can you link that? Because mine only goes to nine and a half. Yeah, uh, nine and a half. Yeah. I got yeah. It's a pretty it's a pretty good thing. But I'm surprised, you know, because they had a couple other tips. He talked about how to um, how to. Uh, Shorten your power band if your power band got stretched out. He had a trip tech tip about that and stuff. But you, you fold it in half that way. It well, he tied it in a them. knot. Yeah, he tied it in a knot, but less reliable. Yeah, I more I, more, more adjustability though. I'm still trying to I'm still trying to instill in everybody how important it is to know how to you know adjust your two stroke valves because nobody even knows where they are. 
because mm-hmm. yeah, both you, of them, right? Yeah, both of them. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't worry. There's some. There's some of my journalist colleagues that would actually like right now be googling that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, oh, well, how about the Suzuki question? The I Suzuki like question. That. Well, I like the question about if you guys could only own one bike, what would you pick? You have three seconds. Oh, three seconds. I'll answer mine. KTM five hundred. I the the new CRF. 450X. You're kidding. Really? I kid you not. Wow. Kid you not. That's only because your picture's on it. You got, I think it's one of the ones that's rotating up behind us. I think you might be up there. You just fell in love with that. Uh, honestly, I, I think the KTM. You, you own a CRF 450R. I do. do yeah. You? And you like my X better? Uh, uh, the Dirt Bike Test X? For for like everyday riding, yes. If, if it was my, my go-to motorcycle, I would rather it. Yeah. So just one bike. And then you then you'd quit going to the in, track. In all honesty, if I had to make like a hands down non biased opinion, it, I think the KTM five hundred is actually a, a far superior bike. It's it a just it's a big it's a big blanket. It just doesn't fit me as well as the Honda. I tend to fit a little better on it. The, the ergonomics of it kind of match my large frame a little better than the than the KTM. The older KTMs fit me a little better. New ones not so much. Yeah. But but as far as as motor and components and suspension qualities and, and uh, KTM five hundred, so, um, uh, wow! So you you <laughs> okay? I'm stealing your answer. Right? Yeah, no, you, just, you more, just wanted to, you wanted to be different. You go need to go, you need to run to social media on your Instagram and, and post on Big Boar Savant that yeah. that you've got uh, your Honda lover. Uh, like I said, Honda lover, but I I do I I agree <laughs> that the KTM is probably better. It's just a good, it's a it's a it's an easy it's an easy choice. Why didn't you say husky? You could have said husky. I could have, but they, they see the problem is the bigger gas tank on it's harder to get. Yep, and yeah, that's, that's a, problem a problem out here. Yep. Okay, so what's up with Suzuki? They released their 2020 off road and dual sport bike, except for the DRZ 400S and the RMX 450. Could a revised DRZ based on the RMX be on the horizon? Is this where we submit questions? You know what, Rob? You submitted it in the absolute perfect right spot, and John's going to answer that question right now. Money. Money. <laughs> it's, 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 it's money. The problem is... The question know, the, is money. Well, well yeah, no, that's a good question. Cool, you know, yeah. the, the DR400 is, was a really cool bike, really awesome bike, but if they added fuel injection and made an aluminum frame, it would that, And that's why it's not in the lineup because currently I'm pretty sure, and and I'm, if Chris Real is out there, he would point it, he would jump mm-hmm. in and tell me whether I'm misspeaking, but I'm pretty sure that right now you're not going to get away with carburetors anymore no. from this year forward. So you're going to have to be fuel injection. And it's mostly, it's not that the carburetor wasn't efficient enough. It's that if your bike with a carburetor happened to tip over, it would spill and it's hard to catch that mm-hmm. properly. Mm-hmm. So, um, and, and, you know, it also helps with, we're in a, we're in 20, almost 2020 now. So come yeah. on, let's get off those carburetors. But, but, but honestly, at the, at the end of the day, it's, you know, if they turned a DRZ 400 into what you want it to be in your mind, it would cost 12 grand like the rest of them. And then you wouldn't buy one. It, 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 it kind of all boils yeah, down to. Yeah, it, it is that. And, and in reality that the RMX is, it, it was designed off the RM, so it was never, ever designed to be an emissions-compliant kind of bike, and that motor was never designed to have the durability that a company no. like Suzuki would no. want to have running down the street because they're, they've are they got to design it to the nth degree that that guy, like on the, the – you see guys commuting on DRZ 400s all the time. I mean, they're yeah. they're that's a great bike. It's mm-hmm. a good, durable, um, you know, long-lasting motor. The RM Z motor, based hey. off the RM, is designed to win – Motors at nationals and race and supercross, uh, and, to, and that's that's why when you look at the motor and, and you know you look at a DRZ motor from the older years and it's it's the cylinders twice the size. It's because everything's kind of overbuilt. They're a little you know a little more rugged, a little more durable. They're they can go miles on the street without exploding. Where your 450 is really not going to love that for very long. At, at you know I got I got six thousand RPMs. Yep, yeah, I got, I got one for you. Casey and Aaron uh, wants to know. She, uh, he, she, um, those are, I can't tell. Okay. So taking on the tour, tour of Idaho, if you were going to take on the tour of Idaho next month, John, um, would you have a specific skid plate to recommend? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, probably the Acherby's full skid plate or the TM designs. The TM designs a little thicker, a little more durable, a little heavier. Did you, did you see both the logos floating up here? And that's why you said that answer? 
No, that's because what I own. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I own both of those skid plates. For and you paid full pop for them, too. I did. I did. Yeah, see, there's, there's the TM Design Works logo. I, I have to agree. Um, I am trying to remember what I had on my bike when I did Tour of Idaho. I'm going to guess it was the TM Designs plate, although I may have actually had an Enduro Engineering on one. That's an aluminum one. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I constantly am slowly going away. I've always been anti-aluminum on the skid plate thing. Of of all of the skid plates, um, the aluminum ones that I put on there, that one or that bike didn't seem to respond too bad, and mm-hmm. it's got a lot of dents in it. But I did have it on my five hundred for a long time, so uh, I have to agree that that you you know you kind of it's it's not that you're gonna you're buying something that you're you're gonna purposely smash into something. It's like on accident, and mm-hmm. like and and so some people like you know Black Dog makes one that just like covers everything, and it's big and heavy and made out of thick material but mm-hmm. it affects the way the bike handles so and, uh, and and that's that's where i kind of balance the the cherubies versus the tm designs where the the tm designs is a little more of a, a moto style skid plate you know it's a little smaller a little closer to the to the frame where the tm kind of wraps up around the okay yeah, yeah that's the, what you said the, so the cherubies the is a little bit yeah cherubies yeah. is a little bit thinner and the tm design work has some bigger thicker plates yeah and it, it also up. usually on most bikes it kind of rolls up around the the inlet for the radiator and, and the I have pump. and I have I have one of each of those on on mm-hmm. some of my KTM 500s out there and I should probably at some point when I have a free moment when I'm not working um, write a story about or you know talk about the skid plates and stuff and kind of one of the the unsung heroes of those skid plates is they do have that uh, usually the front mount is a hook so yes. they snap on and a lot of times they have one or two bolts in them and then they just snap right off. Actually, some of the stock KTM skid plates are actually pretty good. The oh, ones that used to have the single, yeah. yeah, single clips and they rose up and protected pretty well. But so, it's nice because they're, you know, if you're, if you're like me, you certainly can't change the oil with the skid plate on. Yep. So uh, it's nice to make them where they come off easy. What is my preferred sprocket setup for the KTM 950 or 1090? I think that question goes to you. No wait, you don't have one. I, I don't yeah, have that, one. It, it, oh, it's that's KTM. That's not KDX. Sorry. Uh, uh. Yep. Um, I am currently running Dirt Tricks. Um, not Dirt Tricks. I'm sorry. Um, I, I'm gonna get now. I'm gonna get in trouble from Nate. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> DDC Delaney Drive Components uh, Sprockets. Uh, two teeth bigger on most of my uh, uh, KTM uh, adventure bikes, of which I have too many uh, of those. So, um, yeah, the DDC, and, and the good thing about Nate at DDC is he supports a lot of the land use and off-road stuff. Uh, really good guy, and they're indestructible uh, sprockets for the most part. So, Bobby, hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, I can not only own one bike. You're right. I can't. Special needs. Uh, yep. Yeah. Hey, Victor. Let's see. Victor is a popsicle guy. You know, do you ever do you ever get a popsicle at King of the Motos? Probably. It sounds yeah. like something I'd be into. Yeah, he is the popsicle guy. I met him out there. He's a friend of uh, Eric Kudla's, and he showed up out there with a, a case of popsicles, and they were like homemade, the the good ones on the Mex- little Mexican cart ones like that. Mm. He makes them. He manufactures those things. Hispanics, uh, what you meant to say, but I understand. No, Victor, Mexican, right? <laughs> you're you're going you're to correct me on this. <laughs> It's Mexicano. This is, they're a good thing. Um, KDX 200s are the perfect do-all bike. I think John will disagree with you. Do-all bike? <laughs> perfect do-all bike? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure two of them actually ran the Pahrump to Dakar rally here a couple oh. years ago. So Two? You mean, you mean there, were there two? There, I know you were on one. I was definitely on one. I think there was only one. Or did it take you two bikes to get through it? Ah, let's not. <laughs> Get the specifics. I do own two of them. Uh, Justin asks, why can some bikes like the new Sierra 450 have so much less engine braking than others like the YZ? A good, excellent question, Justin. This is where we get into some of the stuff that we can explain and other people can't. And by the way, so one of the things that Heather did tell me about the difference between YZ and uh, YZ FX and WR was the FX has so much more compression braking, and it has a little bit to do with the mapping because you can adjust it with mapping. Um, that it was... That that was one of the things that made it aggressive because when you chop the throttle and even a little bit, it had compression brake feeling. Yeah, which is a super good thing if you plan on pounding into a corner at, at you know full speed or whatever. So in reality, what that is is it's 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 a characteristic, and a lot of the a lot of the engine designs now they're actually pushing the cylinders forward 
on the engine, so it's actually an offset crank location, so it reduces um, compression braking. It's all have to do with the forces on the piston and where it's you know driving um, when it's under power and off power. Mm-hmm. Um, but they, it, it's kind of it seems like less. The, the 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 general consensus is like less is better. But it is one of the advantages. The inherent advantages of a four stroke is compression braking. It actually helps the bike. It it decelerates. It settles the bike. And so having the optimum amount is something that you know guys on these race teams that that actually spend all their time tuning the engines. They're not just trying to get more power. They're trying to get a certain feel and compression braking is one of them. So you can advance and retard the ignition or add a little bit extra fuel in there. And I remember old, back in the old days when I was racing a Honda XR250. Yeah, that's XR250. Like, yeah, that that's no, it's no XR200. That might had four valves. Uh, yeah. So um we would actually adjust the compression braking with the idle speed mostly because if you just and it's funny but if you just run a little bit of idle speed up you can get rid of a lot of that so um it's it's there's a certain amount that's inherent to the engine design and it's different between each bike and then there's a certain amount that you can play with in tune so um if you ever have too much or too little play with your idle um i i still even do it on two strokes i mean that's how you know, sensitive I am to something mm-hmm. like that where, you know, I'll, I'll play with the idle a little bit so that it actually, um, it doesn't, like if it's too high, it runs on and ding, ding. And, 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 and if it, and if it, if it, oh. if it shuts off, then it really shuts mm-hmm. off. So there's like a happy place in there. So, uh, let's see. And can other makes be modified? To, I think I just talked that. Yeah, good. I answered that question. Other makes reduce engine braking. Let's see. Um, Ambrose asks, there is a tool for every job. My bike hoard is like a socket set. Okay, maybe a worn out socket set with no 10 millimeter. Well, then it sounds like you need a either a KDX 200 or a KTM 500. Ambrose, <laughs> hopefully that uh, helps you out there. Uh, Kim Boos, 6'4", 200 pounds. Small guy. Yeah, that's what I, I knew you were going to say that. Mostly Takati single track, Los Sensianos. And some high desert technical stuff. Selling my Sierra 450X and leaning towards a 500 EXC, but considering a 350. Here we go. <laughs> this is the question. Okay, you got, you got the magic ball. We're gonna have to eat some salsa here in a second, so yeah. you might want to break that thing open. Um, I, I've actually got a, a little bit of experience. At, let's see. At well, hold on. I got. I got, to, I got to get there. Considering a 350 or 450 EXCs has to be playable. Have an XR 650R for longer trips. Any opinion or advice? Well. Um, let's see. So you have the long distance stuff covered on the XR 650R mm-hmm. and you're selling your CR because hopefully it's an older CR 450X, a carbureted, one. A carbureted one. I'm just going to guess. This is where like more information. So we're just breaking it down. Uh, 500cc, but can he, at that size, so he's, he's uh, seven inches taller and 20 pounds heavier than me. So he's, he's in between us. Yeah. You should come here and sit right here, yeah. and then and then we can yeah, talk you fit about this. Yeah, in the middle. right in the middle. Um, man, uh, you're you're just go sit on them. Go sit on them. Go sit on them. Go find a dealer and sit on one. But I'm worried about I'm worried about the 350 power deficit. You, you know the 500 to 350 power de- deficit. Uh, it's a big number on paper. Yeah, and you can just on the 350, you can just turn the throttle a little bit farther anytime you're riding it, and mm-hmm. probably have plenty for what you're doing. Uh, for, it's for, it's just he's at two, well at 200 at 200. I'm going to say 350 is okay. Once you hit like 210, 215, that's where it. That's where it, I really don't feel it drops off too bad until about 250. But okay, two okay, really, uh, you you would know better than me. I I I just I I don't know. I I notice it when I ride a 250F. I'm I'm at 195. You know, 185, 195. I always say 185, but you know, like when I put my gear on and stuff, I'm up there. I'm a two. I'm in 200 pounds when I got my gear on. But when I hop on a 250F and especially like a an off road one, I that's when I really feel it, and the bike just doesn't pick up mm-hmm. the way that it it should. You know, like but a 350 for me at, at my weight, it it's fine. Uh, see, seeing as he's really looking for technical stuff though. And again, with the lack of information, you know, we don't know your your rider background. Uh, odds are most people can't use a 500 for what 500 is worth. And 350 is a, a little more comparable number to uh, rideability versus power. And-, and and I always go back to my same thing. It's an analogy of revs versus torque. If you're a torquer, if you, okay, if you like your XR650 more than you like your Sierra 450X, 
you're a torquer. You're mm-hmm. you're going to lean towards a 500. And the 500 will make your older Honda feel heavy. Oh boy. Heavy and sluggish. I mean, the, the 500 will feel like a 250F. That's, that's, and I'm not just saying that. I'm, I just said it. Um, but the, 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 like I said, the 350, you know, if you, if you don't mind revving something, if you don't mind, you know, you know, putting a little juice into it when you really want it to go, um, or to get the kind of power you need, then 350. So it's, it's torque versus, torque versus revving. That's the, that's really the kind of the, the answer. Yeah. Oh, someone says that KTM 200s are pretty good. I wouldn't know. Yeah, no. no. <laughs> that's, One, that's 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 a, that's, that's, that's that was my two stroke of choice, but I'm starting to go in. I'm going into TPI zone. By the way, I get to go ride new TPIs at the end of next week up TPI, in Washington. That's a, that's a weird way to pronounce KDX. No, no, that's that's a KTM. It's a patented KTM thing, and that's why nobody else has two stroke uh, fuel injected bikes right now. So. Uh, KTM 350 XCF is the best all around, according to Craig Hunter, and I'm gonna shoot him down because that thing has a big, has a linkage that hangs down like a. We ever talked about the scrotum sack? Whoa. <laughs> Here, I don't, I don't know where we got in that discussion. It's I just got, constantly dragging in the dirt. It's, I, it's yeah, best yeah, it's best not. That's why I like XCW or EXC, uh, Craig. That, but, that's uh, that's that's really personal preference too Let's see. And, and it depends on how many logs you plan on jumping over and et cetera, et cetera. okay so there's a guy that has an 18 ktm 500 and he's pretty happy with it and he also has an xr 650r and a cr 450x hey um mark y- you you need to get one motorcycle like, like that three motorcycle stuff that's that's for uh, motorcycle journalists and professionals only uh whoa san felipe bob actually joined in oh boy Never seen him before. Yeah, no, uh, and he, he doesn't even have a top fan. Uh, oh, he does. He does have a top fan notation on there. He's he's on vacation with the family. Nice. So he's um, he's on vacation. But so next week I'm not going to be here. So I'll be because I'll be working. Uh, my friend bought a new TM300 EN. How do we tune the electronic power valve? You know, Jim, <laughs> I really don't know. I have not had um, one of the TMs. Uh, have I, I think the 125 we had like in one of my last hurrahs at Dirt Rider had an electronic power valve and we spent all our time just trying to jet that bike. Uh, so I didn't play around with it, but I don't know. But there's a lot of good TM resources out there. And currently I'm not one of them, although TM has asked us on numerous times, kind of like Sherco and stuff, to come ride their bikes. Um, we just can't manufacture the extra... Uh, the extra time to do that. Let's see. Um, San Felipe Bob mentions, I've been told to go KTM 500 and never look back. Uh, yes, you have. Um, he's a Yamaha guy. Let's see. Um, check out the beta. <laughs> There's Garrett. Yep. Oh, we got to talk about the betas. We got to get, we got to get to our thing. We'll try to hit, we might go over tonight, but we'll hit our, we'll hit all our questions. Uh, the 2020 betas are in. We kind of hit on them. The big thing is the counterbalance two-stroke. I think that'll help that bike a ton, oh especially since. And it was funny. Remember when we were doing that comparison? We had the beta and the KTM, and this was not the. It was the carbureted KTM. Mm-hmm. And we cut, pull out here and rode down the street, well, and and I got hopped off the bike and I said, "Here, ride this," yeah. because it was like you. It was like night and day, uh, like feet going numb, night and day. Yeah, yeah. It, and it's funny because it wasn't that bad until no. you rode the KTM. You just didn't know it, no. and then all of a sudden you notice that your four strokes vibrate, and those have counterbalancers in them. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think it's a big deal. Uh, they a lot of new uh, body design works. They did some stuff on their smaller board two strokes to get some more power. Um, Beta is a very, very conservative company. Um, they don't seem like they're rushing to change anything just to change it. Mm-hmm. You know, some manufacturers tend to do that. Just to get fresh, fresh yeah, news out fresh, there. Yeah, fresh stuff. But um, when Beta changes stuff, generally it's it's pretty good. Um, their four strokes have a lot of updates, and a lot of it's in the chassis, and they've got some suspension updates. And um, I think those bikes will be will be really good. I'm I'm waiting for fuel injection on a two stroke, but I'm really not that. Do do we have technical technical data on these new betas yet? Yeah, on dirtbiketest.com. You, you priming me with the social media? Shameless plugs. Yeah, yeah. So on dirtbiketest.com, Trevor did a really nice story on it. It's all the information you need to know, and then if you need to know more, you can uh, you can look someplace else where somebody just cut and posted the press release, and you mm-hmm. can uh, you know dull did, through all that stuff did, too. Did they manage to shave any weight off of those bikes? Um, I'm trying to remember. I did not read that uh, in the 
in the uh, in what Trevor wrote. So I'm, if they, if they don't point that out, then they probably yeah. If it's I not mean, usually line. they make a big deal out of it, but you know, it's kind of funny because knowing knowing Beta and especially the way the American importer is just pretty straightforward. Mm-hmm. If it's not like three pounds, he's not going to talk about it. You know, it's not like ounces and stuff. Where yeah. like, you know, it's not like a bicycle bicycle manufacturer where they kind of do that. And so, yeah, um, uh, betas, uh, I'm excited, right? I'm still waiting to get a 200 to test. Uh, maybe it will have to be a 2020 now. I don't know. Um, we're a little behind the eight ball on some would, of this stuff. I would, not be, I would not be opposed to being in on that one. Yeah, because then you're going to have to sell all your KDXs. Yeah, maybe, possibly, <laughs> possibly. Uh, you know what else? Guess what I rode yesterday, John? Can you guess? Uh, didn't, yeah, you, was, didn't you follow me a, on Instagram? Was it a four-wheel drive? No, it wasn't a four-wheel drive. It was an all-wheel drive. Oh, yeah. So I rode. I rode the. And here's here's how much I wanted to ride it. It was 104 degrees when I left this house, and and so we we a couple of weeks ago when it was a little bit cooler, we got the new Christini 2020 Christini uh, 450 all-wheel. It's an AWD 450 DS, which means dual sport. So it's a street legal bike, factory and street legal, correct? Fat, factory street legal, That's nice. and. Uh, we got it here, and all of a sudden they found out that it needed to go out on a photo shoot with um, Motor Trend. So I basically had to get it all set up and send it out with the Motor Trend guy. And they took it up to Idaho, and we're working on a story up there. So um, they uh, – they I'm closing down a tab on the thing here. So anyways, we uh, – it, it came back, a couple little little dents and dings and stuff in it, but – um, I said, I got to go ride this thing because we had an older one out here and you're familiar with this bike, the yeah, older we, one. We actually have quite a bit of miles on those. Yeah. And it, it was, it was a kind of a, it was a test mule for the new one. They were working on the fuel injection. And so the new things on the, on the Christini is they've got, it's, it looks a lot different. They've added some, uh, black frame and, and black engine, I think, mm-hmm. uh, and so it looks wise is a little bit different, but they also got a much updated Bosch um, fuel injection system on it, and that's what that bike, the old one, was really suffering for. Mm-hmm. From it was, it was antiquated fuel injection. It kind of worked. It made the motor run, but it was wasn't all that good. And having this other bike and leading up testing, I knew it was going to get a lot better. And then we got this one, and. Um, I'm pretty pretty stoked on it. And what it is, and this is the thing we have to kind of paraphrase here. So Christinis are built in, I don't know exactly where they're built, eight, uh, ta- uh, Taiwan? Taiwan, I think. So they they have their own proprietary frame. So it's basically, it's a, it's a Honda Sierra 450X, the old one. It's a knockoff of mm-hmm. that particular bike is where the, the, the frame, most of it comes from. The, the, the engine. The golden year Honda. The, yeah, the, the ones that, that was a 20-year run bike or mm-hmm. something like that, whatever. So, I mean, that bike was wrong for a long time. But it's, it's a knockoff of that that integrates their all-wheel drive system. And the thing is that they, they I mean, that's a proven kind of design and everything, and it works. And so it's not the same as, you know, when you're looking at some of the Japanese things and the the Austrian stuff that's just the finish is super – it's it's kind of like a little bit in the knockoff zone, but mm-hmm. it's really not that bad. This stuff no. has gotten a lot better. And if you see how many scooters these factories knock out that run forever and ever, like some of that stuff isn't, isn't an issue anymore. And so you kind of go, well, what, what is – the fact that it's a production all-wheel drive bike and here's where it it sits is like it's a trail riding bike it's a 100 mm-hmm. mm-hmm. a, a a trail riding bike and and then then we kind of go into like what is all-wheel drive and i've i i own a older converted honda crf 250x that's converted to a christini and i've had it since like when they first started doing the conversions i love that bike it's mm-hmm. fun to play with and so I've I've had experience. I rode one of the very first Christini prototypes way back in the day, and uh, you know, so I kind of understand how it works. And and a half of that is explaining to people. It's like it's not it's sort of not what you think. And until you ride it, maybe you don't totally understand what it does. And it's the 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 kind of the the term terminology I like to put in, and I've heard some other people say it's traction control that works. It's not like an electronic traction control that's kind of like sensing something and then figuring out what to do and then kind of trying to alter what the bike's doing by cutting the power. This thing, the Christini, 
feels the rear wheel slip and then starts putting power to the front wheel. So it's it's doubling your coefficient of traction. It, you know, it it because that's the only thing that yeah, that's the only thing that's on the ground, you know, as long as your yeah, handlebars yeah. on the ground. So when that rear wheel starts losing traction, it it transfers, you know, some of the power up to the front. And where I find it amazing is just like when you're we have a lot of the loose gravel washes and mm -hmm. stuff here. And when you just when you start snapping that throttle, just start grabbing it, the bike gets up and goes. Just in we have the video of like the adventure bike. It, we're it, in the sand. Yeah, it has far less of that, like where if you jump on the throttle too hard and it wants to just step the tire out. It's got far less of that, and, and it, you, you can actually feel it kind of pull when you expect it to pull. Yeah, and so the so the so the power it's probably like compared to a new Honda 450X, it's probably seventy five percent of the power. Mm -hmm. But you know, you, you're thinking about it when you're trail riding, you don't need that power up on top. No. You need the thing, and it runs like a tractor. It it's like old school. Oh God, yes, like XR 400, mm -hmm. and that's where the fuel injection has gotten really good. It's kind of slung that thing. It, it lets it just go bug, bug, bug. And every once in a while it'll stall. But mm -hmm. like at the low RPM you're doing it at, it's not kind of surprising. The clutch on it's really good. I, it's a light clutch pull, really good action. Better, better than my Honda. Uh, trans <laughs> transmission ratios are a little bit tight. I think they copied the 450R gearbox and mm -hmm. not the 450X gearbox. So first gear is a little bit tall, fifth gear is a little thing. Front brake is a little bit on the soft side or weak side, but I... I, when I was talking to Christine, they said, "Hey, we just need brake pads. It's it's got it's got brake pads in there that are like you know certified for some sort of EU certification. Mm -hmm. They have stuff that's more aggressive. So it's like which which I know every time I ride the Christine, I, I turn around and think to myself, and I go, for me, probably not the perfect bike in the world, but I for probably eighty percent of the world, <laughs> it's actually it's a fantastic bike. It's it's yeah. very it's very forgiving." It's again with the, with the front brakes being a little squishy. It's yeah. if you're kind of inexperienced and you nab a whole handful of front brakes, it's probably not going to break your collarbone in a heartbeat. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's you know for for the kind of targeted and, group and 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 so the other thing the only other thing I'm going to complain about is is the suspension tends to blow through the stroke the rear more than the front and it's not bad, mm -hmm. it but it's it's. It's enough to where, and, and everything's going more stiff in competition direction. It actually has a pretty fair amount of, um, you know, it, it's a good plush suspension. It's just the back goes down a little faster than the front. And the front's a WP. It's the same fork that was on a generation ago KTMs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have the, this. it's the WP open cartridge fork, the Explorer fork, but it has, it has, so it's better because it has oh, compression and rebound on both sides, right? I didn't know they went to the Explorer. Yeah, so the that's good. So, so the old the old fork, um, you know, the new KTM fork only has compression and rebound on mm -hmm. one side. And I'm I'm saying that sarcastically because everybody says, well, it only has on one side. It's only half as good. I I like that suspension. But anyway, so the fork is actually pretty good. It can you know you know it can be tuned to work. And the shock, they Christine actually has an Elka shock that's actually really good that mm -hmm. you can for three hundred dollars more you can upgrade to that shock. And I'd still like to play with it. I haven't had a lot of time to start playing with the balance of the bike. And I think maybe transferring some of that weight to the front mm -hmm. could help the shock out and then playing with some clicks. But like I said, I just got a quick 60 miles in it yesterday. Yeah. But and, and, and that is another thing is, you know, it blows through the stroke a little bit, but it also makes it where the, the rest of the stroke's very plush. It's, then, and it, the bike it's stays cushy, so it's, it's, a, it's a heavier, it's a heavier bike. Mm -hmm. It's connected to the ground. It, it tracks well. And with that, with that all wheel drive and this, so this is, so it's a, it's a 9,000, it's a 95, Five hundred and ninety-five dollar bike, so it's a ten thousand mm -hmm. dollar bike. But where else are you going to get an all-wheel drive motorcycle? And from my experience, and also from seeing groups like when the military purchases motorcycles, they buy these because for novice level riders, the fact that when mm -hmm. when you're starting to lose your balance and you fall over and you gas it, and that bike goes, yeah, instead of kind of stepping the rear instead out of and, slide, and trying to hide sliding the bike, out. It really, it really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. And and as a, as an advanced rider, it takes me about fifteen minutes to learn to 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 get get to re get used to what that bike is doing. Uh -oh. And it's it's funny because anytime that front end passes something that you you want to turn around, you're on the gas, and and it and it goes the way that you point it. Just like if you're driving, like driving between two wheel drive and four wheel drive, drifting around roads mm -hmm. in a car. You know, on a on a two wheel drive car, you're counter steering the whole time, and and hoping that it there's some bite in there. 
where where on a four wheel drive you you may counter steer a little bit, but you're going to turn into the you're going to steer into where you want to go. Yeah, the tires are pulling and have it pull. It's the same thing mm-hmm. on the motorcycle, and even you know. So I, I start learning to do that, and especially I noticed it the very first time I rode one. I noticed it when I was riding really tight technical trees where you can't lean the bike over. The minute your front end went past where you were turning, you would gas it and it would actually tug and pull the bike. And as a high level rider, I have to anticipate that mm-hmm. and be ready for it. Because mm-hmm. if I were on a regular bike and I gassed it at the same time, the bike would want to push for a second before it transferred the weight onto the wheel. Exactly. It, because it, you're upright versus, you know, it, you don't have that lateral traction. Yeah. And I think this technology is is gonna be is gonna be it, it, it it'll it'll if somebody adapts it to an adventure bike, because I've, I've ridden one that's on, I've ridden mm-hmm. that eleven nine add on there, that's where it's going to be insane. And you're not thinking about it as like it's like a four wheel drive. I'm always locked in four wheel drive. It's like you turn it on when you want to, mm-hmm. you know, get unstuck or go or have low tr- traction situations. And it's frankly, it's amazing. I had a, I, I literally had a blast riding yesterday, kind of experimenting with where I could get on the gas. And you know how rocking, it's dry and slick. Mm-hmm. And I was like. You know, I wasn't going faster than I would on a on a regular bike, but I was kind of having, like, I was kind of having a lot of fun playing with it, and that's the interesting thing about some of these different technologies and mm-hmm. and getting to try them. But yeah, um, the, the riding style is definitely definitely an ad- adaptive feature when it comes to the Christinis. It's you, you kind of have to rethink what it. you're doing. I don't know if it's in like you know because it's a heavier four stroke. It's not like my choice for extreme and and stuff, but. Mm-hmm. You know, just to, it, when you get, I've ridden them in snow. They're frankly amazing. Um, sand, not too bad. You know, it's it's weird because you do get some torques there. So for every advantage it has, there mm-hmm. is some sort of built-in disadvantage that, you know, the, it's a heavier feeling bike in the front end. And I was turning it on or off, and, you know, this, the thing, the uh, all-wheel drive on and off to feel the difference. Mm-hmm. And it definitely works better with it on. But you you know if you start if you start getting a little bit more aggressive and you know on purpose spin the rear wheel you can feel the torque steer mm-hmm. but ideally you don't want to or you you ride through a little ditch and this is another thing I really know so you ride through a really rocky little ditch and you think about it you get about here and you know where it's nose down and that's when you kind of got to get on the gas because you, you you need some speed to climb the yeah. hill on the other side well on a normal bike you're actually you're actually driving your front end into you know, because it's not going to pull. You know, the mm-hmm. weight's still going down. Yeah, it's kind of and, plummeting. And in I there. noticed that that thing transferred across the bottom of the little ravine. Once it gets on the hill, you, you know, it's mm-hmm. it's fine. But instead of because there's no weight on the rear wheel here. Yeah. You, you, know, you know, it's it's so we the want to spin. spin. So the front so would it be front pulling. pulled, and then when that rear wheel got down mm-hmm. to the bottom, it had all of its weight on. It was tracking because the front end kept itself really light instead of being driven into the hill. And once you're moving up a hill, um, I don't think it's any advantage at all because if you if you steer out of line, it's going to want to pull yeah, you. Yeah, but that in the first back. five feet of, of you but know. starting and stopping and just getting going, like if you stop on a hill and you want to get going again, this bike mm-hmm. actually goes. It doesn't want to dig a little bit of a hole. So that's uh, that's kind of like just a quick talk on the on the Christini. Um, some you know quick impressions. I'm sure we can touch on that later I, if I, other people have. I think we answered most questions. of these questions. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. they, you know, the, the technology's proven it's been working for a while. I'm surprised the manufacturer mm-hmm. hasn't, you know, kind of picked it up and started using some of this stuff. It's, I know they've tried to get around it and they're trying to do it with electric and electric and it's not working, but, yeah. uh, is pretty, Christine still building kits for motorcycles or are they strictly into production? So they, now? so they have, they have a 300 CC that they use a gas gas motor. Okay. Um, and uh, that's a nine, $9,900 bike. They use a gas gas engine and they put it in that same that same chassis. Mm-hmm. And so you can get a two stroke race bike and it has a little bit better, it has the better shock on it and some better, a little bit better brake components and stuff because they don't have to be, I guess it's TUV certified, you know. The, yeah, the I, I, rem- I remember back standards, even, even not too long ago, maybe six, seven, 10 years ago, that you could actually send them your frame and have them convert it to you know they would they would add the the I I wouldn't I I, I haven't asked if they're doing that still but I wouldn't be surprised if they mm-hmm. they don't they don't still have the capabilities to do that um yeah because you could send they had a jigs for KTM's and for Honda yeah, yeah and, I, I, I remember and, seeing a lot of the uh, the kind of whatever generation that two thousand eight to maybe thirteen twelve KTM frame was yeah they, they I know that I remember they were doing a lot back then. That's what, yeah, that's what, so my, because my, my Honda, I think, is a 2005, the the 250X. So, um, anyways, the only thing we didn't really touch on, I think, was our long-term Honda Sierra 450X, which uh, we put a video up on the website today. So, you can, actually, it's on YouTube, too. So, you can find it 
uh, on dirt bike test. We forgot to test the salsa. Yeah. Maybe maybe we'll maybe we'll we'll do that one and we'll let it run for a few minutes here when we clip the mics down. Mm. And, and uh, if you see us run away, you know it was really hot. And if we sit here and smile, uh, I'll I'll make it for sale next time. Yeah. So uh, You're next to the kids' shirts. No. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, okay. And do we have any other? Do we have any other? Um, Questions that we should probably try to answer real quick. Thirty-two people are on the on the thing right now. That's pretty good, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for joining us. Let's see, amazing piece of energy. Christian always drives the strangest feeling at first. Yeah, so there's somebody who has some experience. Uh, and George did his job and put the website for Christini up. Mm-hmm. So George, you should have put that video up with the guy giving you the top five. Uh, tips because i know you're all over the internets um (laughs) you can uh, you can uh, track that one down i'll do i'll do my i'll show my throttle tip to go to 12 next week not not next week maybe the week after after yeah okay john you have anything else to say wrap it up uh oh send some likes shares and everything else that they say you're supposed to get blowing up out of the bottom corner that's that's pretty good Order apparel, yeah. Yes. Order apparel. Click through on Amazon. Support the uh, companies you see up on the banners below. Tell them you saw us on uh, Tech Talk Taco Tuesday on Dirt Bike Test. And with that, my mouth is watering just looking at the yeah. chips and salsa. Kid sizes is soon available. Yeah, <laughs> and we will uh, catch you out on the trail. Cheers. <laughs>